Welcome back to Books Are Alive. Today we are reading How Kate Warren Saved President Lincoln by Elizabeth Van Steenwick and pictures by Valentina Belloni. One day in 1856, a young woman arrived at the Chicago office of Alan Pinkerton, founder of the world's first detective agency. The woman's name is Kate Warren. She asked Pinkerton, she she told Pinkerton she was looking for a widow looking for a job. Pinkerton never thought to hire a woman for a detective job, but he was curious. What would you do in this line of work, he asked her. Kate explained that the woman that women were more skilled in obtaining secret information. Men liked to brag about their adventures and women encouraged them to talk by pretending to be impressed. Women, she said, could also worm out secrets in places that where male t detectives couldn't go. Pinkerton hired her the next day. Just like that, Kate Warren became the first female detective in the nation. She disguised herself in fancy gowns and turned up in society parties. Many of the women there were married to su successful men in businesses and politics, and they were eager to talk about their husbands' careers, especially to Kate, who thought she, who they thought was one of them. Sometimes she dressed as a fortune teller or other, wore other disguises to parties. She collected useful information that way. One of Kate's first big cases involved a man named Nathan Moroni who was suspected of stealing money from the company where he worked. She assumed that the name she assumed the name Madan in Imbert to befriend his wife. Kate knew that Mrs. Moroni would be more likely to tell her secrets to someone who had been who had something to hide as well. So Kate pretended to have a secret, a husband in prison. Before long, she convinced Mrs. Moroni to show her where her where the stolen money was hidden and Nathan Moroni was arrested. Pinkerton and his men were received glowing praise from the Chicago newspapers for solving this case, but Kate was never mentioned. Only a few people knew a woman had saved the day, but Kate Warren's most important role was yet to come. Abraham Lincoln was elected president November 6, 1860, but many people in the southern states were opposed to his intention to abolish slavery. By the time he and his family prepared to move from Springfield, Illinois to Washington, D.C., six states had seceded from the Union. There were rumors that some Southerners were preparing to stop Lincoln, Lincoln's inauguration. Pinkerton heard the rumors too. While in Baltimore on business, he learned that a group calling themselves the Golden Circle were meeting to discuss a secret plan against Lincoln as he traveled to his inauguration. Lincoln's travel route from Illinois to Washington had been reported all all in the national newspapers, so his schedule was known to, to friend and foe alike. Pinkerton called Kate and to Baltimore immediately, posing as a wealthy woman from Alabama. She infiltrated the Golden Circle by wearing a rosette on her lapel. All members wore such a badge to signify membership. Kate soon learned of a plot to attack Lincoln as he passed through the city. He'll never leave Baltimore alive was being whispered on the, the city streets. By now, the president's elect journey had reached New York City. Lincoln would only visit a few more cities before he reached Baltimore. Kate traveled to New York to meet with a close friend of Lincoln and warn him of the assassination plot. While Pinkerton met directly with the president, the detectives have had a plan to keep Lincoln out of danger. Lincoln arrived in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on February 22 to attend a dinner in his honor. 
he was scheduled to take a train to Baltimore on his way to Washington the next morning, but instead Lincoln would change his route and leave earlier than planned. Next evening, Pinkerton Agency put the plan into action. Lincoln did not stay long at dinner in his hotel room. He disguised himself in an old shawl to cover his dark suit and a knit cap to replace his familiar top hat. Then Lincoln and his companions left the hotel from a side entrance and took a short carriage ride to the Harrisburg Railroad Station. A private train of only two cars was waiting to take Lincoln to this unscheduled stop in Philadelphia. As the train left the station, a Pinkerton agent climbed a, a telegraph pole along the route and sabotaged the wire so no one could alert secessionists succession, down the line. Kate and Pinkerton had already traveled to Philadelphia. Now Kate was waiting at the train station there. Her role was to save a place in the sleeper car for Lincoln and his companions on the train to Baltimore. Because the sleeper car had curtains, it was the only spot on the train where the president could ride without being seen. But as Kate waited, the sleeper car began to fill with passengers. Thinking quickly, she told the conductor that her older brother was coming and needed privacy because he was ill and needed rest. The ploy worked. Nobody recognizes the president-elect in his disguise and as Kate led him aboard. While he, was, while he rode behind the curtains, Kate spent a sleepless night nearby. The train arrived at Baltimore's President's, President's Street Depot in the middle of the night. When, While Pinkerton stayed with Lincoln, Kate left the train. She would stay in Baltimore and listen for rumors of other plots to harm Lincoln, but she must have worried for what had come next to the President in the most dangerous part of the journey. The train has reached the end of the line in Baltimore, the railroad workers unhitched the sleeper car from the rest from the rest of the train and a team of horses pulled it to a station across a team of a town to be hitched to another train. It was the only way the passengers could continue a trip to Washington. For Lincoln it meant he would be unprotected as the train car moved slowly through downtown Baltimore, a perfect opportunity for an attack. There were no attacks that night. No one knew Lincoln was on the train because he wasn't expected until the next day. At last, the car was joined in the final train. Washington, D.C. was only 38 miles away. The plan had worked. train arrived in Washington shortly after 6 o'clock in the morning of February 23rd. On two weeks later, on March 4, 1861, Abraham Lincoln was inaugurated on the 16th President of the United States. Alan Pinkerton hired other women as detectives as a result of Kate's excellent work. When the Civil War began in April 1861, Kate often sent other detectives, men and or women, to do dangerous work near or behind the Confederate lines. She was so valuable to Pinkerton that he placed her in charge of the Washington office. She continued to work for him for several years. When Kate died a few years after the war ended, she was buried in Pinkerton's private family plot in Chicago's Graceland Cemetery as a tribute to her service. Her obituary was published na nationwide and other women took note of her remarkable achievements. The suffragist Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton wrote about her in the revolution. The newspaper about women's rights noting her good service for many years in the watching, whaling, exploring, and detecting. It has often been asked, would you make women police officers, they wrote, and as it has already been done. And Kate Warren had done it well.
the end that's all for this book please like comment and subscribe share with everyone you know stay tuned for the next video bye bye